Welcome to 18th Century Cooking. I'm your host, John Townsend. Today we're going to be baking bread with wild yeast and bacteria. Sounds great, doesn't it? Thanks for joining us today as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century. Bread has arguably been the most important food source for people for thousands of years. It was so very important in the 18th century, especially for those people in the lower classes, those working class folks in England, in North America. Um, super important to understand exactly what's going on with bread. So people in the urban centers, they had access to bread that was um, from the baker. So whether it was a inexpensive bread or an expensive bread, depending on what uh, they could afford, bread was available in the urban areas. But out in the rural areas, uh, bread wasn't as available and especially what it takes to make bread that we typically consider yeast and barm that you would get from the brewer to make your bread nice and fluffy. And bread always has, or almost every bread, has basically four ingredients. It's flour, it's salt, it's water and it's a leavening agent if it's a leavened kind of bread. So something like yeast. But what happens if you're in a rural area and you wanna make bread, but you don't have that available? That's the thing that I've been studying and trying to understand for a decade. And it's very hard to get this information because it's not something that's typically written about. It doesn't show up in cookbooks because it's, it's low class food. It's made every day and, and those folks, they don't write down their recipes, they just do it. And so what we're left with there are descriptions of breads and descriptions of how they make them. Many times those people writing it don't actually understand exactly what's going on with the bread. But today we're going to dig down into where this comes from. A couple of weeks ago, I read from William Ellis's book about oat cakes. Remember the, the, the whole journey cake episode, which is an unleavened bread. But in that same section here, he says, uh, by mixing oatmeal with water and a little salt, which they let stand together 20 or more hours, and then they knead it into a dough or batter. Multiple references here in um, William Ellis's book from 1750 talk about uh, multiple different kinds of oat cakes. And one of those is a kind of bread that they called uh, sour cake. And it was a dark loaf, it was sour, and it was probably leavened in this technique where they knead it together and then they let it set 20 or more hours. That's the hint here. What's going on in this 20 or more hours? Well, let's talk about that. Here are some doughs that I've made up earlier. And they have, uh, here's one. This is just a standard dough lump, um, kind of made about the same consistency as you would do the bread itself. And then we let that set for, uh, this has been setting for probably about 30 hours. And you can see it's starting to break up. It's starting to expand. It's starting to get all kinds of air bubbles. Look inside this. It doesn't have any yeast in it. Well, it doesn't have any yeast, yeast that I added as a particular ingredient, no barm. What, what has happened is, is this has got the yeast that is available in our environment. It's uh, in the air, it's on my hands especially. It's in this dough bowl that I mixed the dough up originally. And you can see there's little pieces of, of dough that's left over and that's on purpose. You don't clean your dough bowl out too much because it actually leavens the next batch. This is talked about in so many different books here in the 18th century. And you can even find references to that going on in the book of Exodus in the Bible where it says the whole reason why they didn't have uh, unleavened bread was because they couldn't get access to their bowls. That, that's what was leavening their bread. So this is what's going on in this. Um, that the yeast that's, that's available in our environment and even on the grain itself is doing the leavening action. And we can make a very wet version of this, a sponge. And that's talked about in, in these cookbooks also. Um, just they don't talk about it in this particular context of making a very primitive bread. Many times they just talk about this in a, in a yeasted bread or one that uses what they called leaven or the old dough technique where you might start off with yeast, you make, you make your bread, you take off a little piece and you use that the next day or two days later or even a week later if you store that in salt. So they had 
different techniques for making these inexpensive or kind of worker bread. So for us today, we know that what's happening here is that it's yeast, it's bacteria, it's all sorts of things in our environment that are making this happening. In the 18th century, they had not identified yeast, they had not identified bacteria, they just knew it worked. They called it leaven, they called it sour sometimes, they just, you know, they would say it's sour dough, it's a piece of dough that's gone sour. Right? So they didn't know what was going on. They hadn't identified those little things that are happening in there, but they knew it worked. Now this dough is just simply a little bit of wheat flour, some rye flour, because that's kind of important and it was one of the inexpensive grains in the time period, and then salt and water and, and mixed up into an, a soft, soft dough. And this is in our dough bowl, so it's going to get some of that yeast from the bowl. Might get some from my hands or from the flour itself. It's going to start percolating over time. We're going to have to let this set, though, quite a while like this. And we want to set it someplace warm. Uh, the dough bowl is perfect. It's wood, it's insulating, um, and we're going to set it someplace warm. It's cold today. We're going to set it close to the fire, not too close. We don't want to bake it. So we've baked our loaf exactly like we made our farmer bread last year, and that is with our cast iron pot turned up over uh, a nice warm stone, and then we can add some fire to the top of that to keep that nice and warm, and that will bake it uh, just like you would, you know, in a Dutch oven or, or actually in a larger oven, except we used a piece of equipment that almost every household would have. So the bread looks amazing, it's set up nicely has a wonderful, very, very interesting, not a standard, uh, you know, a bread out of the oven smell, but definitely a bit of a sourdough smell to it. Um, and again, this is, you know, no special thing, right? This was just dough that sat around for multiple, you know, like a day and a half or so. Uh, and uh, let's find out what it tastes like. I'm, I'm in a, maybe I'm a little worried, but I don't know. Now this is bread that's fresh, freshly baked. Many warnings in the 18th century. Don't eat bread when it's still warm, when it's right out of the oven, don't do it, it's bad for you. Well, we're gonna do it anyway because it's wonderful. It's got some amazing flavors to it, different than standard bread you're gonna get out of the store, obviously. Uh, this has got a little bit of rye in it. Uh, it's just uh, other wheat bread other than that with a, a little bit of salt and of course I just put a touch of butter on it. But the flavor is something that, boy, you just can't get any other way. It is very, very good. So again, this is bread that's made with just flour, salt, water, and then the yeast that comes out of the air in your hands from, from uh, the flour itself. And anyone can do it. Anyone can try this out. Uh, really just, you know, mix up that dough. Let it set for a day, two days, three days if you want to try it, and it'll do different things over that time. You can add flour to it. You can experiment with it. It's something everyone should try because it is just so fun and makes, makes such a, uh, a different bread experience that I think you're really going to enjoy. So I love episodes and recipes like this because we have to put together the pieces of the puzzle to understand what's going on with this simple primitive bread that you're going to find in poor homesteads on the frontier all these places that you know you can't you just can't go to the baker and buy bread and so many people were in that kind of situation it's so interesting to you know dig in on these topics i just love them if you want another one that's like this make sure to check out this farmer bread episode <laughs>